Welcome to Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel with Katie Lee. All the best resources you'll ever need at Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel. Hi everyone, it's me, Katie Lee Hornberger, Certified Genetic Counselor, and today is Wannabe Wednesday. On Wannabe Wednesday, I cover topics of interest for people interested in applying to genetic counseling school or learning more about a career in genetic counseling. And today, I am so excited, I interviewed Megan Lyon about MPH's Master's in Public Health. I finally learned a little bit more about what type of career you might pursue if you get your Master's in Public Health, and a little bit more about what it looks like to go to school for public health. If you're interested in learning about getting an MPH in genetics, um, maybe as an alternative to going to genetic counseling school, this talk is going to be really informative. So without further ado, let me introduce my guest today, Megan Lyon. Since 2013, Megan Lyon has worked at the American College of Medical Genetics and Genomics, or ACMG. In her current role as the Associate Project Director of the National Coordinating Center, NCC, for the Regional Genetic Networks, she supports collaboration and activities between the NCC and the seven different regions. She helps foster access to quality genetic services for underserved populations. Ms. Lyon is passionate about improving the national healthcare system through policy and infrastructure initiatives. From the George Washington University in Washington, D.C., she received a Master's of Public Health and Health Policy and a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology and Political Science. Let's get to it. Megan, this week is Public Health Week, um, Public Health Genetics Week, I should say. Can you tell me a little bit about the week and what it's about? Public Health Genetics Week is a week that we use to raise awareness and to celebrate the field of public health genetics. So the organization I work for, which is the National Coordinating Center for the Regional Genetics Networks, otherwise known as NCC, we work at a systems level uh, looking at genetics and access to genetics care. And we really saw that there was an opportunity to bridge public health and genetics and really hopefully raise awareness about the field um, for both professionals and the public. Cool. And I think it's so fitting we're doing this interview for this week because I've always felt like public health and public health genetics, which I more recently learned about, is is kind of like right on the fringe of genetic counseling. But I don't know anybody who practices in the area. I don't know much about it. Can you explain just about an MPH? What do you do on the day-to-day? What is your career like? Yes, absolutely. So uh, a master's of public health is, I've always kind of felt a little bit of a misnomer in terms of like what the work looks like, because uh, in NPH and say genetics or health policy or an epidemic epidemiology is very, very different. The work is very different depending on what you want to go into. So it really has a lot to do with what you concentrate on. So for me, I got my MPH in health policy. So I studied a lot around um, how policy affects healthcare. So it was looking at laws, looking at legislation, looking at the federal structure to see how the federal government has implemented um, activities that positively or negatively affect healthcare. Um, Or you could go and do an, uh, an MPH in genetics, and that's very focused on the genetic service delivery system, um, where you could go and do something around data analysis. And so, depending on what you go, your concentration is, that kind of sometimes somewhat dictates what you do day in, day out. So, for me, um, I'm the associate project director of the NCC, and so what I get to do, which I really love, is there's a lot of different things in any given day. Um, we, as the NCC, are looking at improving access to genetic services for underserved populations. And so we have specific focus areas that are related to that. So it could range from we develop educational activities to educate really non-genetics providers on Mm -hmm. genetics. So they know when is an appropriate time to refer a patient or to know, say, you get a uh, an out of range newborn screening result. A primary care provider may never see that condition. And so what are the next steps? And so we develop um, what are called the act sheets and for that. And so my role is to oversee all the educational activities as well as our other activities. For example, um, again, I have a policy background is both my undergraduate and graduate degree. And so we um, at NCC have a genetic policy hub. And so what we do is provide policy education and then we do policy analysis on specific areas of genetics to really help the community understand 
wise informed consent, <laughs> a policy uh, concern, uh -huh. or wise genetics privacy, a policy concern. So my day in, day out, any given day is very different. Uh, Sounds like it. What we're <laughs> yeah, what we're really focusing on. But it's really looking at organizationally and systemally, what can we do to help improve access is um, my responsibility as um, okay. my role. And that's really what my master's of public health really helped um, teach me about looking at the system level care. Great. Oh, that was a really informative answer. And I have a few follow-up questions on that. So to inform your opinion as you're developing these policies, do you work closely with clinicians like geneticists or genetic counselors or doctors? Yeah, so um, we don't uh, write our own policies. What we do related to policies, we do analysis of, say, looking at, um, for genetics privacy, there's the uh, GINA, the Genetics Information, I'm not going to get that acronym right. Non-discrimination. Uh, I apologize. Yeah. Yeah, Non-discrimination, thank you. Yeah. Uh, we look at GINA, and then we look at what the states are doing. And so what we'll do is write um, very short policy analysis of, like, what does this mean? And uh, from that, we do okay. work with clinicians. Yeah, so we definitely... Um, uh, geneticists, genetic counselors, families, public health professionals all work uh, with us to develop these tools and resources that we have within the NCC. Okay, cool. And then another question based on your previous answer mm -hmm. I was wondering about is I didn't realize that there were concentrations for MPH until I had a friend who went mm -hmm. into an MPH genetics program. How many different mm -hmm. concentrations are there? Are they always like separate programs? How does that work for people interested in like just learning more about becoming an MPH? I want to say there's at least 20. Oh, there's wow. A, there's okay. a lot. There's, there's, there's a lot. So what happens when you get your MPH is there's a core set of classes that every MPH takes. And okay. it's really, um, it utilizes the public health framework. So there are 10 essential pieces of public health that the CDC has outlined. And it's really utilizing that framework. Everyone takes those classes. So it's things like the basics of epidemiology, um, public health um, management, and health. there's a health policy class, and a biostat class, and a general bio class. Okay. So those are the, there are a core set of classes and um, it's been a couple of years since I've had my MPH, got my MPH, so they could have changed it slightly, but I think there were about six core classes mm -hmm. that we had to take. And then after that, then you go into your specific concentration. So depending on what you want to go do, that's what, it's really like your first, you, the second semester of first year and then your second year is a lot of focusing on those classes. Um, mm -hmm. And as I said, it's, it's very dependent on your concentration. Like an epidemiology MPH is almost entirely statistics classes is their concentration because oh, okay. epidemiology is looking, using data to track conditions and uh, spread of disease. Um, where like my health policy background was I took a couple of law classes. I took a couple of classes about um, specific federal programs, like say, how does the FDA uh, a process work? Mm. Or um, health uh, information technology was really popular when I was getting my MPH because they just passed a law, um, one of the big federal laws about HIT. And so there's a class about learning um, those, those laws and how it was being applied in the federal government. And so it's very different depending on what what concentration you'd like to go do. And then that leads to uh, different careers in the long run. Uh, I see. Okay. Wow. That seems so much more specific the second year and like whatever concentration than yes. what I was imagining. Are there, and I know it may have changed since you've been in school. Are there lots of programs mm -hmm. in the country? Do you need to know your concentration uh, yeah. before you apply? Like what's it look like when you're thinking about this <laughs> as a career? Yeah, I think that's a good question. So first, yes, there are a lot of MPH programs, um, and it's even expanded since I uh, finished my MPH. It's a very popular field even prior to the pandemic, and I'm sure since the pandemic, people, the general public knows more, more about aware. health yep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> than ever before. And so I'm sure they're seeing an increase in people interested in the field anyway because of that. But there's uh, there are a lot of programs. You can go to, um, this is public health which is um, an organization that kind of collates all, a lot of different organizations' information about public health to see the different uh, school programs that um, you can go to. Um, so there's 
uh, so there's a lot of different places you can go. There's online programs, there's in-person oh, programs. Cool. So it's all over the country and you can do it virtually. Um, and then in terms of knowing your concentration, I think personally, it probably is better to know what you're interested in because again, as you just said, your second year, you do kind of become very focused on a specific area of public health and you don't really have that much time to like to make the leap um, in terms of if you wanted to change your concentration or not. And so I definitely went in knowing I wanted to go do health policy as my concentration. And it definitely allowed me to then plan out my classes appropriately and, and things like that. However, if you know you want to go get an MPH and want to do some exploratory classes, I mean, they definitely, the school, is, at least the school I went to, is very accommodating and, and in terms of, you know, helping you understand what you want to do with your MPH and, and guiding you. And I'm sure many public health schools would do the same thing. Okay. And then as far as, and I'll um, link all of the websites you're mentioning below, the landing page for Public Health yeah. Genetics Week and NCC's website and all of those things. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just curious, because for Genetic Counseling School, there is this whole list of things you kind of have to do before you apply um, to make you a competitive applicant. Is it similar? Is it a pretty, pretty competitive to get in? Or is it just different depending on the school? Are there requirements besides having your undergrad? Yeah, so... I believe there were maybe one or two classes I had to take uh, mm -hmm. prior to my MPH. Um, I think a couple of science classes, if sure. I remember correctly. Um, but they were pretty generic. It wasn't, I, I don't know the data for um, the acceptance rate for MPH programs, but I would not say it's as competitive as GCs just because there are, there are many more MPH mm -hmm. programs in mm -hmm. the country. Um, and um, obviously, every school has their own requirements. Well, let's circle back to talking about public health genetics, since that's the week yeah. we're honoring. Um, tell yeah. me, I know it's not your specialty or what you work in, but tell me a little bit about what it might look like to be and uh, have an MPH in genetics, what type of job or like areas you might work in if that were what you got your um, degree in. Yeah, absolutely. So um, there are a number of roles within public health genetics that um, any someone could go into. So you could go into like what I have, you could absolutely do what I do with an, uh, your master's of public health in human genetics. Um, but I know a lot of people go into specific um, state programs. So like newborn screening is a big one. It, it's just a big public health genetics program in general. It's like, it's the gold standard when we talk about mm -hmm. public health genetics, people tend to know newborn screening. Um, and that's definitely obviously something that's done at every state. And so there are MPHs that help with, with that system um, and a lot of programs. Um, there are also federally funded programs such as myself, or there's a lot of other newborn, there are, there are newborn screening federally funded programs that an NPH uh, could go and work in, or a federal agency. So there's um, CDC, um, as I said, HRSA, which is the Health Resources and Services Administration, which is what we're funded under, um, NIH. There's the um, um, Agency for Research, sorry, Agency for Health Research Quality, ARC. Um, they have, they don't have as much of a, a genetic focus, but they do have some, um, so those are like the, I would say really those CDC, NH, and HRSA are the big three federal agencies that are uh, involved in genetics. And so an MPH could definitely go and work for those. Um, also, there's beyond just uh, working for the government agencies or nonprofits, um, like membership organizations, uh, working at advocacy organizations, because yeah. advocacy is a big part, uh -huh. a big part of any system, but especially public health genetics. Um, right. And so they're, they're the family support organizations. They're the general um, advocacy organizations. Like I know that there's a newborn screening foundation that just looks at newborn screening. It's not condition specific. And uh -huh. so um, potentially an MPH could go and work and that cool. yeah I didn't so even there's think really about that. a variety yeah there's there's a variety of things you can really go do but I, I believe that um, individuals who do get their MPH and human genetics tend to be um, government facing roles um, that's obviously not always the case but I, I believe that a lot of them go into that uh, type of work 
I think that about wraps it up, but I wanted to see, is there anything else, any other resources, things to check out for somebody who's interested in just learning more about public health or maybe public health genetics that you haven't already mentioned? Yeah, absolutely. So I would say, I, I know you're going to link to our website, but really go in and explore it. So we structure the week around daily themes. So the first day is what is public health genetics? The second is who's involved in public health genetics. The third day is what are public health genetics programs. The fourth day is public health screening, which encompasses newborn screening. And then the fifth day is public health genetics resources. Um, there are also fact sheets for each day, um, daily social media graphics if you want to participate on oh, social cool. media. Um, there's a lot of things to help uh, help celebrate the week and raise awareness. Um, and then we also have some fun activities, like we have coloring pages, puzzles, um, we, we'll do a digital escape room. Um, and then finally, we have, I think we're up to 12 events for the week this year. And there'll be two student events, so there'll be a Reddit AMA and then a student panel. Um, the Pitt students who are getting their MPH oh, cool. in human genetics oh, that's awesome are to going about. to talk. Yeah, and so that, that if you're looking at it from a student perspective, there are some events uh, about that. Then there are a number of events for professionals. So someone who's maybe a GC who's interested in learning more about the field of public health genetics, there will be um, there's three precision public health echo series. CDC's holding a webinar, uh, NCC's holding a webinar on our policy education efforts. Um, so there's a lot within Public Health Genetics Week website. Wow, to really you guys know how to throw an event field. for only uh, a couple of years <laughs> old of a week because that that sounds quite established. Cool, I can't, I'm yeah, excited to check yeah. out some of those. Um, yeah, some yeah. of those events. Cool. Okay. Um, well, I think that's all I had for you for questions. And I'm really, I'm excited personally to check out the resources and learn a little bit more about public health and public health genetics. Um, anything else you want to share? Or does that cover it for you? No, that's good. But I just can't thank you enough for your interest in our week and about the field. So I'm very excited. Um, and yeah, we hope to see people uh, participate in the week and to always feel free to contact uh, myself. Um, I'll, I'm happy to give you my contact information or um, just follow us on social media um, and to learn more about public health genetics. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. I am so excited I finally got to share some information about public health because I get so many questions about it and it's just not something I'm very knowledgeable on. So I'm super excited to check out some of the events. I'm especially interested in talking to the Pitt students about their program and what it's like to be in school. So I hope you'll check out some of the events and check out the links down below to learn more if you're interested too. If you're somebody who's been wanting to learn more about MPHs, don't forget to like this video and please subscribe. Bye, guys.